the 20, and I call this technique the 20 period moving average halt technique, as in halt, who goes there, as in stop, okay? Now, the first thing in order to pick a bottom is that you need a decline. You need a stock or any item that you trade to be declining. And you preferably want a very thorough decline. This tactic is less reliable if we're talking about mild pullbacks. I'm not talking about picking local bottoms. I'm talking about picking the bottom, okay? The bottom after an elongated move down. The bottom after an extended downtrend. Not the local bottom within an uptrend. There are two types of bottoms, local bottoms and the bottoms. We're talking today about the bottoms, okay? All right, so to, uh, I think this is today. All right, so I grabbed a two-minute chart of um, LCID. There's um, a very, very steady move to the downside. So we've got the decline. Now, I'll, I'll explain something here about the declines. When I, when I see a thorough decline, a multiple bar after multiple bar, after multiple bar decline that has distance from its moving average, I start getting interested in possibly looking for the bottom. What do I mean by distance? I am talking about distance from, okay, let me grab my pen here again, distance from the nearby 20 period moving average. Now, if I were to draw a line straight to the chart, to the actual price now, there is great distance between the two. The best bottoms form from a distance away from that 20. Not all of them, but the very best ones statistically are far from the 20. Now, I'm going to even improve on that. If the stock itself is far from the 20, and the 20 is also relatively separated from its mother, the 200, we have what I call dual space, space one, space two. A dual space bottom is the most powerful bottom of all. It is the number one technical sign that the sellers have largely gotten all of their selling or most of their selling done, okay? Now, if you look to the left very, very, very quickly, you'll see that, you know, if you, if you try to pick a bottom too early and you don't have that great distance, you know, the odds are much lower for you. But the things that I look for is, an elongated drop. So here's the beginning of the drop, and here's the drop to here. So we've got an elongated drop. This is not a short drop. It's an elongated one. And so if the sellers had ammunition, bullets to sell, you have to imagine that their guns that they're selling with, boom, 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 can't still be that full of ammunition that the move is so deep and so elongated that most of the selling is probably done, okay? And we confirm that it's, it's highly likely with dual space. Now, we don't need dual space. The dual space is the optimal situation. You only need really one space. But if you've got two, wow, okay. So the first thing is the decline, okay? Now, that same decline, the next thing we need, we need is a move up through the 20-period moving average. So remember, the first thing we need is the decline, elongated decline, preferably with space, preferably with dual space, okay? Then we need number two, a move through the 20 period moving average, not to the 20 period moving average, through, 
the 20 period moving average, okay? So we need this, the move through the 20. Now you can come to the 20 and drop, to the 20 and drop. That's not what I'm talking about. We need the move through the 20. All right, that's the second criteria. First, we need the decline, elongated, preferably with space, really preferably with dual space. That's one. Number two, we need now to see if the stock is capable on its next rally of going through the 20 period moving average. Okay, so Lucid did just that. Now, the third thing we need is that the next pullback after going through, we want to see if the 20 period moving average halts it. We want to see that now that the stock is above the 20, does the 20 catch the stock on the way down? That's the 20 MA halt. Or does the stock just ignore the 20 and continue lower? If the 20 catches the stock, all right, that's when we start to salivate. This is catching the secondary bottom. You see, the first bottom is here, the dual space. And we have techniques, I have techniques with my traders to try to capture that first bottom. But the second bottom after the bottom is far more reliable, okay? And that's what we're focusing on today. Now, in this case, the 20 period moving average did catch it. There was a brief slip, but that's okay. That's more like leaning on the 20 period moving average, like boxing ropes, but not breaking it. We come right back. We lean against the 20 and come right back. Okay. So the 20 period moving average caught it. Now, after the catch, what you need is for a green bar to take out the high of a solid red bar. What's the most recent solid red bar? It's right here, right? You see that? Now, as soon as, now that we have the halt, as soon as the first time a green bar trades above, I'm going to erase this so you see it clearly. Once a green bar trades above the high of its most recent solid red bar, boom, no questions asked. You don't wait for that green bar to finish trading. You don't doubt. You don't hesitate. You don't call the psychic hotline. All right. You don't seek for anything else. You just hit the darn buy button and immediately protect yourself. Here's how we protect ourselves. We're going to go under that halt. We're going to go under that halt. So wherever the halt happened, okay, we're going to put a protective stop under the halt. Okay. Okay. Now it should go without being said that you should know how much you're going to lose. Should it not work this, you should know before you take the trade. Okay. But that's a different topic. But just to mention that no professional trader goes into a trade without knowing I'm not going to lose more than this. Okay, so you got to know where that stop is and you have to be able to calculate if it doesn't, if I buy here with X number of shares and it does not work, I will lose X, which is okay because X is not more than my, what my plan dictates is my maximum loss per trade. Every trader needs a maximum loss per trade. Okay, so we've got the halt. Remember the items. We need an elongated decline. That decline preferably should have space, one space, but really preferably two spaces. If we've got an elongated decline with either one or two spaces, the next thing that needs to happen is the stock needs to move to be to demonstrate its ability to not move just to the 20, but sear through the 20. Now, once it sears through the 20, now we're watching closely. How does the next pullback fare? And if the 20 period moving average catches that next pullback, okay, the plan goes into play. We grab the most recent red bar, we mark off the high, and if a green bar takes out that high, boom, protect ourselves under the halt.
Okay. Now, some traders might ask, well, Oliver, what if it just sears through the 20 and keeps going? Well, that's life. You missed the train. All right. Have you ever missed a train in life? Yes. Miss the bus, mix a taxi, mix, miss your ride. It happens. It's life. Move on. It's not yours. We only want the ones that demonstrate a 20 MA halt. All right. My father used to tell me, many of my traders know this story. My father used to sit down at the dinner tab table and tell me when I was a teenager, Oliver, stop chasing every single dollar in the world, right? Every dollar is not yours. There are some dollars that belong to other people. You have to carve out which dollars in the world are yours. This keeps you focused, Oliver. This keeps you knowing what to do. This prevents you from being distracted because if every dollar in the world you want to chase, you'll never get roots. You'll never settle down. You'll never focus. And this is what I'm constantly telling my traders, all right? This move is just not ours. All right. The dollars we've carved out for ourselves are the ones that come back to the 20 and halt. Those are our dollars. And there are plenty of them to take advantage of. OK, good. Thank you very much, Dad. Thank you. All right. So. We've got the halt. Boom. Now, the initial run. I'm not finished on this initial run. If it's decent enough, if the move is decent enough, right, to, let me show you, if the move is decent enough, I have no problem with my traders taking profits. What's decent enough? If you get a decent enough space away from the 20 that halted the stock in the first place, there's nothing wrong with taking profits. But I want us to try to take advantage of the secondary play which is the next 20 MA halt. You see, the first one often leads to the second one. And sometimes the second one is bigger. So we've caught the first halt. There's another halt that's highly likely, highly likely. Now, now, so I have no problem with taking profits. I try to tell my traders, if you're going to take profits on that first one, don't take it all because we really want to add to the play if there is a second halt, okay? Now, so the, the, the halt play is not just one halt, it's two halts, okay? Keep, it, keep that in mind. It's not just one halt, it's two halts. Now, let me clear the, clear the drawings here, and boom. Now, boom, okay? I don't know if you can see that. But we shoot really nicely high from this 20 MA halt. This is today, guys. I always try to show you things relevant. I don't want anyone to accuse me of going back in the past and cherry picking. This happens all the time in the market. So I always try to use things from today, right? So we get that first halt, boom, trade above the red, protect ourselves below the halt, and I love that sound, by the way. Do it. Do it for me. You know how to do that? No, I know you don't have, know how to do it. That's why you're here, but we'll get you there. Okay, <laughs> teasing you. All right, so we get, that, we get that real. Now, here is where I do want you taking profits. If you're going to take, remember, space in the market is, a, is an action. We had space to the downside in action, space to the upside away. You've got to act on these wide spaces. Right. If you're not a wide space actor, the odds are against you for success in this game. OK. All right. So anyway, the secondary drop, here's the pullback to the 20. If the 20 halts it again, you're in likely for the secondary run. Now, sometimes it's the secondary run that's bigger than the first one. This is going to be hard to match because this first one run here was big. But oftentimes, it is your second run that's bigger than your first run, which is why I don't want my traders not taking advantage of that second opportunity. It might not present itself. That second drop might just shoot through. Okay, it just shot through. But if it doesn't, I want us ready. And in this case, it doesn't. Boom! We halt at the 20 for the second time, and green takes out its most recent red. Boom! 
What do we do? Protect ourselves under the halt. Okay? And, as you can see, boom. That's the second halt. Okay? This is the second halt. This is the first halt. Here's the second halt. And there's your space. Space above the 20, you must act. Okay? Anytime you have space, wide space, above the 20, you must act. All right? It's, it's relative. I understand. But if you're, you're intimate with the stocks you play, you'll know what's wide for those stocks. Okay? or the financial items you play, because this strategy works on every financial instrument out there. All right, so very nice, very nice, very nice. So let's take a look at one more here, Roku, okay? Uh, this is from today as well. Okay, Roku opens up today, briefly moves to the upside, and then goes into this elongated, there it is, the elongated trend to the downside. Now, Remember when I told you, we just need space. We need an elongated move down and we need space, but preferably dual space. Well, here is no dual space, but we have space. What do I mean by one space? The separation between 20 and 200, okay? So that's the first space. Remember on the previous slide, right? I, sh I showed you that, let's go back for a second. On the previous slide, I showed you that here we have space. We have two space levels, and I made this one and that two. That's on purpose. It's not inverted. The first space is always the space between the two moving averages. The second space is between the stock and the 20. Okay, keep that in mind. It's very important. All right. It sounds like it's not important, but it is. And I'll explain it to you right now. OK, so here. We have. Ah, so we have an elongated move to the downside. That's criteria one criteria. Part of that criteria is we need space, preferably dual space. But if we don't have dual space, we need one space, one space. Remember, the number one is between the two moving averages. Number two space is between the stock and the 20, okay? So here's number one space here. One. We don't have wide space between the stock and the 20. So we only have one space, but that's okay, right? Two is, is super ideal, but one is workable, okay? So we've got one space here. Now, what's the second criteria once we have this elongated move to the downside with space? We need to see the stock demonstrate its ability to sear through, not just come to like it did here. It came to and dropped, came to and dropped. You see, came to the 20 and dropped. No, this sears through. So the very act of searing through the 20 is telling you that the stock is demonstrating qualities of change. It's certain suddenly gathering some extra ability to do what it wasn't able to do how many times? One, two, three times before. So why is it all of a sudden that this stock is now capable of doing something that it failed at three times? Hmm. It's going through change. It's ready for change. Okay. Now, we sear through. The next thing we need to do is we need to carefully monitor that pullback. Now, remember, these dollars aren't yours if it does that. Okay? Remember my dad's lesson. Every dollar is not yours in the market. Don't chase every dollar. Focus on defining your dollars. The dollars we're going to make is if this stock pulls back to the 20 and halts. Okay? And let's see if that's what we have here. Boom, we get that pullback, beautiful, this looks beautiful, okay? Pull back to the 20, 
we halt and the first time a green takes out a solid red. Now, some traders do it above the little reds, okay? The best ones come when they're taking out somewhat of a solid red. Your solid red here is here, okay? Now, look at this. This took out the solid red too, but it wasn't enough lift above the 20 for me at that point. It needed more lift. This is the lift. This is the searing through. Now, this pullback is the ideal one. Wow. See that green take out that red? Boom. Don't remember what I told you. Do not wait for this green bar to finish. As soon as it clears, it could still have another minute left in the bar. Who cares? You're in it already. I don't want you waiting for that bar to finish because what if that bar finishes up here and you've missed the trade? We're getting in right above that red, red line. You don't doubt. You don't check something else. You don't try to seek verification. You don't roll bones. You don't call up the hot, hot, psychic hotline. You don't call up your trader friend to tell, ask him to look for it. You just hit the button, all right, with certainty. I like bold, certain traders that when the action, I want to see who you are when the moment that calls you into action I want to see who you are at that moment. Do you hesitate? Do your palms get sweaty? Does butterflies start or elephants start jumping up in your, do you seem uncertain? Do you shy back? Do you play ostrich? Do you put your head in the sand and pretend that it didn't happen? Do, or do you become bold? Do you leap into action without a shudder of doubt? Is your action pure and full of power and certainty. These are the things I want to see when the market calls you into action. What kind of soldier are you? Okay. And so I want it done with certainty. Now, once you're in, okay, stop. Your protective stop is below the halt. We got a very low risk opportunity here. Now, I'm always saying the minimum target you should try to go for, you might not get it, is the 200 period moving average. All right. And sometimes we can break through on the secondary one. All right. But let's see if we can get to the 20 back to the 200 period moving average there. And so if that happens, your profit is this and your risk is that. How many of these little risk amounts fit inside of this profit amount? And if you can keep the ratio like that, you will stay in this game forever. You're going to do extraordinarily well. All right? Okay. Now, beautiful. Boom. What happens here, something interesting happens here. All right? The stock flirts with your stop. Okay? Now, let me talk about this. My traders are taught to take a two bar stop. So their stop would be there on the second bar. So, so oftentimes a stock might slip marginally below your stop level and come back. So we have a two bar stop rule. All right. But we, we, we do get some sort of lift here after the buy. Boom. Now don't think that that small guys, that move there is, looks like it is da, 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 Oh, it's like a dollar and 20 cents or something like that. That's not, that's not a bad move. Thousand shares gets you, you know, um, $1,250. All right. Now, we pull back. We go through the 20 again. But do we, on the next attempt, do we at some point get a secondary? Do we get a a decent, see this, this move is not decent enough to consider a sear through, see, but this move gets height. I need height above the 20 and then come back. Give me some height above the 20 and let me watch that come back. You see, see, we got height here and it's seared back through. Okay. But we get height again and we get another halt. And here is your solid bar. 
right? And there is your buy. Once it clears, once any green bar clears the solid bar, you don't see if you wait for this bar to finish, you're going to buy here. And that's wasting too much money. That's giving too much money to the market. We're going to buy here. Plus, the closer you buy to your entry, the the closer you are to your stop. So it's actually safer than waiting. Some people think that waiting for confirmation is safer. No, it's more, it's risky. It's extra confirmation costs money. Just like extra insurance costs money. You want extra security, extra security costs money. You want something extra in life, it costs you money. We don't need the extra with this. So we're going to keep the cost small. The cost here is small because my stop is here. But if I were to enter here, my stop has to really be the same. So that's my cost. It's too big for me. Okay. And we get lift. We get lift. All right. We should be taking some off the table. Anytime you get lift, you can take some off the table. I have no problem with that. Anytime you get lift away from the 20, we can act. You can never go wrong doing that. Okay? So that's the 20 MA halt, guys. Elongated decline plus space, preferably dual space. Then we need to see the stock get sear through the 20 and get lift above the 20. We watch that next pullback. If the 20 MA halts, we grab that most recent solid red bar. Boom, we buy above the high of that red bar. We protect ourselves against uh, under the low of the halt, and we look for moves away, and we monitor to see if there's going to be a secondary halt in the play. Okay, beautiful, beautiful strategy. I've been using this for 25 years, guys. Now, just to quickly show you that this is not just a, a micro trading strategy I want to show you a couple of big time frames and then we'll close out, right? All frame, all time frames work. All right. Here is an example of, I think this is the oil index, right? So we're below, we're below the 20. So look at the stock trends. Oh, I'm showing you the wrong thing here. Give me a second. Look at the stock trend down a bit. Now we're not under the 200. But we're, we're definitely trending down from this local top here. We're trending down. The stock gets below the 20 with some degree of space. All right. Now, we get above. I would really have liked to have seen this get a little bit higher above the 20. But boom, we pull back. And this solid bar clears these multiple reds there. So sometimes when I don't have a solid bar to work with, I want to see a green bar clear two or three of the little ones then. So this green bar clears all three of these little ones. So I'm looking at those little ones as, a, as one solid bar chopped up into three pieces. Okay. And so boom, buying into that bar, protection under the halt, the rest is history. All right. And so that's looking at this is a daily time frame. This is a daily chart. Now, if I go to a weekly time frame, you can see it in snap. Now, sometimes in the weekly, the events that you're watching happen a little further apart in time. Right. So here we have we're under the 20. We get lift above the 20. We pull back to the 20. And this bar right there clears out multiple little reds. So when I don't have a local solid red, I'm okay if the bar, the green bar clears out several little reds. That's the same event to me. Boom, right there, 20 MA halt. Protect yourself under the halt. And as you know, when you start to get distance away, you want to take profits. Okay. And there you are on the weekly time frame. All right. The same thing. Let me get rid of these things here. Boom. And you can do this. This is not rocket science. 
I believe that there has been historically this false narrative that has been promoted in in terms of market play to the general public in particular. And it was a tactic to sort of keep regular people out of the game, to deny access. Um, this was an historical way to create separation amongst people, right? To deny access to my private club, to deny access to my market, to deny access to my neighborhood, to deny access to my schools, all right? It's just part of history. The markets had this, where it was sort of like a private club and the barriers to entry were high. Technology helped to bring those barriers down, all right? Um, the lowering of interest rates helped to do that as well. A, a variety of things helped to create the advent of the internet came into existence to lower barriers. And, but this notion, despite the fact that now virtually anyone can gain access to the financial markets, gaining access to the proper knowledge is still not very easy. And also, um, despite the fact that most people can have this access, most people are operating in the markets without the proper training, without the proper guidance. And I'm here to tell you guys that you can't do it that way. It doesn't come out of the sky. It doesn't come from watching YouTube videos, even mine. They can be helpful, but you can't learn how to trade from YouTube videos. You can't learn how to trade from reading books. You can't learn how to trade from going to traders expos. Those things can serve as a really solid foundation for learning. All right. You can't learn how to be a doctor in medical school. The medical school, the education, sitting in, 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 in lectures, taking notes, memorizing Latin, all right, taking exams, those things are necessary for the doctor, but they don't make the doctor. And so I find that a lot of people are stuck in trading medical school and they think that's enough. It is never enough to know what to do because knowing what to do is no guarantee that you do it. Most people think that education is all they need, which is knowing, but you have to make the knowledge yours through training. And it's the training part, not the education part. Education today is free. The advent of the internet made it free. The demonetization of value today that's going on, this era has made education free. Today, I can hold an entire library, multiple libraries in the palm of my hand. So education has become dematerialized. It's become digitized. Education is free. Certification is not free, but education is free. But if you need a certification, you're going to have to pay for that. But the education being taught to get the certification, that's free today. Knowledge is free today. Thank God for the internet. Thank God for this new digital era. But what can't be digitized, what can't be dematerialized, what can't be skipped is training. A doctor needs training to become a doctor. Medical school doesn't cut it. The education is not enough. And so many people are out in the markets thinking that, why am I not doing well when I know what to do? But that's the knowledge part. You're missing the training part. And the training part is the experience, experience building part because your success is on the other side of your experience. It's not before experience. Any success you get before experience is luck, all right? Your success, real success, comes on the other side of experience. And experience takes time. How do you gain experience? Through training. You have to take the knowledge and grapple with it, fall with it. You have to work with it. You have to make it yours because one thing I will tell you is that you can't trade my knowledge. You can't trade my experience, but you can take my knowledge. You can take my experience and make it yours through your training.